Uh, good morrow, everybody. Um, apologies for yesterday. I was rather unceremoniously um, stopped uh, at, towards the end of the video anyway. So I don't think it matters too much. We're just going to continue today talking about Titus uh, and the Christian connections there. Um, in the early, I mean, we're talking about the second century, really. Um, and yeah, some of the, I think the the things that make it into the New Testament that shouldn't really be there. Um, and also the fact that we're obviously dealing with a kind of Christianity that did exist um, in, in some nascent form, most likely um, the Gospels being stories that incorporate and encompass deep moral and philosophical and even mystical um, beliefs that are really derived from mystery schools. Um, so that is there before Titus comes along, wins the war in uh, Judea, brings back some interesting people, I'm sure, people he, he starts to listen to, and perhaps um, even really begins to understand. And, and he, he wants, um, it looks as though he wanted to create um, a religion that would serve a purpose and um, part of that purpose though unfortunately was a literalizing and I think the second century Christians like Irenaeus and so on they look very much like they're doing this and it sounds it's just in the vitriol and the propaganda that it looks like they're spinning now is, is fairly uh, clear when you read their texts uh, they were in a pitched battle of ideas with with uh, more mystical um Docetists say, and also just spiritual Christians. And remember, the as I've said many times now, I hope I'm not boring people, but the uh, the epistle writers seem to be from that kind of strata, um, though they do make it into the official Orthodox Catholic kind of canon. Uh, anyway, um, this is probably in an effort to consolidate Christianity and a forms of Christianity that had many different beliefs. There are tens and tens of different Christianities in the second century. It looks as though if you read carefully, uh, Marcion's church was thriving uh, in about 150. And he had churches dotted around the, um, the North Africa and so on in, the, in Asia Minor as well. So we're going to continue reading um, from uh, the um, Christ uh Creating Christ, sorry, James Valiant, good book. And you can find James Valiant talking voluminously on this online, by the way, on YouTube. Uh, and the documentary, which is extremely interesting. Um, anyway, today, these rebellious Jews are not normally called Christians, even though they anticipated the arrival of a Christed or anointed one, the Messiah or the Christ, to lead them in their holy war against Rome. To pagan Romans like Tacitus and Suetonius, who may have been ignorant of the finer distinctions between uh, Messianic Jewish groups, the term Christians uh, or Christian may well have uh, applied to Messianic Jews as a whole. Suetonius confused mention of a Jewish uh, Christus causing violence in Rome itself before 50 CE, uh, or around, I think it's more like around 50 CE, appears to confirm this conflation of terminology. So in the Roman world, as I've said before, Christus or Christus, what Christus could mean and did even mean another thing, meant, meant freed, um, meant useful or helpful essentially, and you used to apply this to often to freed slaves or just people in your household that were, were paid to be useful helpers and so on. Um, so this is profoundly important for both people. This is me talking now, who wish to resolve the testimonies of Christ outside the Bible and for information that will be reviewed in the remaining chapters of this book, and namely that Jesus existed but not uh, the mythic, heavily pagan solar deity we find in the Bible. Um, that, so, um, that a Jesus existed, but not the mythic. So, I don't know what I mean there. Jesus Christ, I'm going to have to go back to this. This is actually in a, in a book that I haven't um, looked at very 
much for for the past two or three years. Let us quickly deliver a pivot and proverbial uh, left hook to weaken the biblical argument a tad more. If we uh, we have touched on the possibility that Rome may have had a hand in the creation of Christianity and the geopolitical propaganda the Bible may well have been engaged in, let's resort to shamelessly using a serious scholar in placing. Um, in, in place of your humble correspondent, hear me, to outline the thrust of the argument. In a time of Jewish rebellion, first century Christian literature is, com- is commanding its ad- adherents to pay their taxes, honour the emperor and go the extra mile for the Romans. It argues that existing governmental authorities have nothing less than the agents of God, are nothing less than the agents of God, appointed by God, and that all um, virtuous people have nothing to fear from Roman authority. Submission to them is itself a virtue, and, more, and um, the more subservient the submission, the greater that virtue. All this uh, the New Testament instructs us. That's creating Christ, page 184. Um, and Continuing, not just Romans, but even Roman centurions are awarded high praise in the New Testament in the aftermath of the bloody conquest of Judea. The greatest story ever told takes pains to completely exonerate Romans while exclusively blaming Jews um, for Christ's death three times with a cartoonish heavy hand. So we go from Messianic Jews who hate Rome, who are xenophobic, who are very much insular peoples, who hated their, the fact that they were in servitude to the Romans now, many of them. Um, and they were fighting through the 50s, 60s, and of course, in 70, it all came to a head. Um, after this, and I think, and I don't necessarily agree with uh, Valiant here and Fahey, um, I don't see there being any influence really of Christianity in the first century. There was probably something going on at the end of this first century. I've, I've said this, but as far as books are concerned, there's probably nothing really there. Manuscripts of, of sermons, perhaps, um, general Christian creedal remarks and statements that are being made. Um, <clears throat> this, yeah, uh, remember the story relating from the New Testament telling of Pilate's washing of his hands. Again, this is so important. Suddenly, you get pro Roman Christians walking around being like, guys, chill out. It's okay. Don't be this violent messianic um, per- person, fighter anymore. No, we can now, we can respect Rome. They're all right. We can actually praise uh, centurions. We can honor. Um, people for going the extra mile and these these romans being good people better than even the jews can you imagine this the you know this is in the the, the um, new testament um i'm about to give you a couple of quotes on this um now um this is not typical behavior for pilot um we we know from history of course this idea of washing hands and and being um and actually honouring what the Sanhedrin wanted. He was pretty vicious and brutal towards Jews. Um, uh, Yes, uh, Pilate is seen to be brutal, uh, again, to Joseph and Josephus in his chapter in which the testimony of Flavio appears. Again, it it says this guy was not good to the Jews. It seemed apt if the gospel was um, concocted as favourable propaganda, depicting the Romans as a necessary and human humane sorry force in judea applying their own specific form of governance and ensuring the emperor got his taxes Uh, this after of course the romans were made a literal uh, made a literal bloodbath of jerusalem and its people killing them indiscriminately in a bloodlust and sending rivers of bloods into the streets this is recorded in josephus um yeah, this is uh, so. We're going to go to Romans thirteen one to seven now, and here, uh, Paul and then Mark talk about this, um, this pro-Roman kind of stance. And remember, Paul's letters have been heavily doctored through the second century. From whatever they were in the beginning, um, they changed towards the end of their publication in the in the canonical Gospels in about one eighty. Uh, with Irenaeus, this guy is so important to uh, co- canonical Christianity. He clearly had a hand, I think, in in helping Rome to synergize and connect with this new 
but nascent Christianity, which is taking converts from Ju- Judaism a lot, and now is peaceful and not violent, not come to bring a sword. No, 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 different stuff. Let's uh, so Romans thirteen one seven let one two seven let every person be subject to the governing authorities for there is no authority except for God and those authorities that exist have been instituted by God therefore whoever resists authority resists what God has appointed and those who resist will incur judgment for rulers are not a terror or or sorry terror to God good conduct but to bad. Do you wish to have no fear of the authority? Then do what is good, and you will receive its approval, for it is God's servant for your good. But if you do what is wrong, you should be afraid, for the authority does not bear the sword in vain. It is the servant of God to execute wrath on the wrongdoer. Therefore, one must be subject not only because of wrath, but also because of conscience." For the first, uh, for the same reason, you also pay taxes for the authorities of good servants, busy with this very thing. Pay to all what is due to them taxes to whom taxes are due, revenue to whom revenue is due, respect to whom respect is due, honor to whom honor is due. So be good Roman citizens. Enjoy your servitude. If you're a slave, do what you're told. Come on. This is a 180 degree flip from the Messianic Jews uh, that, that came before in the first century. Um, remember, the Jews were fighting, actual real Jews were fighting through the 130s in the Bar Kokhba revolt, revolt. And again, huge mayhem hit Jews at this time. Now, Mark... 12 13 to 17 then they sent to him some pharisees and some herodians to trap him in what he said and they came and said to him teacher we know that you are sincere and show deference to no one uh, for you do not regard people with partiality but teach the way of god in accordance with truth is it lawful to pay taxes to the emperor or not should we pay them or should we not But knowing their hypocrisy, he said to them, Why are you putting me to the test? Bring me a denarius and let me see. You'll know this quote. Um, They bought one. And he said to them, Whose head is this and whose title? They answered, The emperor's. Jesus said to them, Give to the emperor the things that are the emperor's and to God the things that are God's. And they were utterly amazed by him. Now, People will interpret this as saying, like, leave for heaven the heavenly things, the good things of your heart and all of the, the truth of the, and the wisdom and uh, all of these non-physical material things that are for God. they important things in life. Yes, of course, I understand this is a good interpretation of these things, but certainly this quote definitely helps Rome regardless, doesn't it? Pay your taxes, good citizens. The whole reason for the, the, the beginning of the revolt and the, uh, the eventual war in, um, of the Jews, which was recounted at great length by Josephus, was a tax revolt. It was taxes that became a problem in Judea and people were starting not to pay taxes. And now you get this direct and in mark as well an early gospel this is early on 130s 140s this is written right or the it's beginning to get properly laid down in that time we have markers and the bar Kokhba revolt revolt has some um <clears throat> there are elements of that revolt that actually appear in mark so we're fairly confident that it is actually being written in the 130s 135 is the bakokpa revolt the end of it anyway um, ephesians 9 so we're going back to paul here 6 sorry ephesians 6 5 to 9 slaves obey your earthly masters and with respect and fear and with sincerity of heart just as you would obey christ obey them not only to win their favor uh, with their eye uh, but with their eye is on you but the slaves but as slaves of christ 
Do the will of God from your heart. Serve wholeheartedly as if you were that the Lord will reach each one for uh, whatever good they do, whether they are slaves or free and masters. Treat your slaves in, sa- in the same way. Do not um, threaten them since you know uh, that he who is both their master and yours is in heaven and there is no favoritism with him talking about god um again this is a pro slavery but like be good to the slaves think about this how many jews were made slaves after the first of all the the 70 uh, the the taking over of jerusalem and so on which was the win for Rome at that time. And then uh, furthermore, in the Bar Kokhba revolt as well, loads and loads of Jews were made slaves. It would make some sense to create a religion as Rome and the Greeks had done before. Um, uh, Emperors, I'm talking, the rulers had created religions themselves. Would it not make sense, just saying, to have this kind of message put out And this new Jesus character, this loving, peaceable guy, turning the other cheek, accepting the blows, right? Not not in the style of David, King David here, the the Maccabees and so on, and these these violent, rebellious Jews. No, 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 you're going to be good to to everyone now. Always meek, uh, deferential, humble. Um, Yes, Uh, so I'm going to talk about uh, creating Christ again, Christ ideas. Christ ideas do not represent any pre-existing pacifist branch of the first century Messianic Jews. No evidence of such a sect existed before the first century. Have I just read this? Uh, I'm sorry. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, Jews guilt, the message, uh, traditional peace was written down during the Caesar's reign. Um, I think I've actually said this. Sorry, guys. Um, so, I'm going to st- Talk about the yeah the story of Jesus's trial again before trying we talked about this quickly before Pilate is fiction the finding of scholars such as these of uh, the Jewish this Jesus seminar the Jesus seminar was a, a really important get together of Christ, of um, both Christians and atheists to try and figure out what the what the Bible really was all about and go deep into Scripture to find out what was happening and they they came to some amazing results anyway. Um, the Jesus seminar, seminar reflect the widespread view among critical scholars. The fellows were virtually unanimous in their judgment that the account of the Judean trial of Jesus was mostly a fabrication of the Christian imagination. Now, I've, um, I think I've been through the multiple accounts of the trial, uh, and they're often very contradictory. They're not really recounting history. This is by Robert W. Funk, what I've just uh, read, Hoover, Roy um, W., and the Jesus Seminar, The Search for the Authentic Words of Jesus, in the Five Gospels, 1993. Um, so at every stage you get um, peppered through the Gospels. Now, let's be pro-Roman. And of course, the Roman Catholic Church, the Pax Romana, the... Um, the the idea of the emperor being now the new pope it's all over catholicism and this is Irenaeus's church essentially this is i mean he mentions the word catholic i think the first time might be G- justin martyr um yeah yeah i mean this is again like it, the the exoneration of the romans the saying they know not what they do in one of the gospels when jesus is crucified forgive them father they know not what they do. It's not your fault, Romans. It's their, the Jews' fault. They're the ones, guys. And of course, we have this anti-Semitism today um, in cr- the many Christians' minds. Um, it, do, it depends on the denomination, but you do get quite a hefty amount of an- just certainly anti-Jewish uh, um, viewpoints, um, sentiments, and so on. So just, yeah, just going to leave that there, really. Um I'll finish off this with just another Creating Christ quote from page 197. Since there were no way of avoiding a Roman trial, complex, repeated and unmistakable steps had to be taken to exonerate the Romans. Thus, the betrayal by Judas, the triple denial of Peter, the trial before the Sanhedrin, Pilate's belief in Jesus' innocence, the triple demand 
uh, by the Jewish crowd for the crucifixion uh, and all consist, uh, consistent with the motive of incul- um, to inculcate, sorry, inculpate the Jews and exonerate the Roman state in the face of a method, ex- uh, method of execution that had itself otherwise implied Jesus to have been a rebel. Matthew's virgin, as we argue, simply makes this un, uh, sorry, unified motivation motivation explicit so i think that's it there it it looks very much like kind of convenient propaganda i'll leave that there to running over 20 minutes i do not want these videos to be over 20 minutes um so we're going to continue to come back to this and again i'm stressing here i really am interested in the non-literal christianity i'm establishing this here to show the differences between literal and non-literal Christianity. So we can begin to really see the, that cleavage point between propaganda and what was going on in Rome and the Roman Empire and this mystery school stuff that is quite prevalent in St. Paul. But we see these um, in uh, different um, sections of Paul. We get these Roman probably insertions anyway. Love you all. Peace out. Um, have a great weekend. Yeah, cool guys. Nice.